And for more, let's cross to Princeton, New Jersey, Harvard professor Lisa Randall, the author of Warped Passages, Unraveling the Mysteries of the Universe's Hidden Dimensions. Thank you for speaking with us on France 24. Yeah, well, thank you. It's a sad occasion, but um, thank you for having me. Yeah, poets remind us that we're made of stardust. Stephen Hawking, you could say, took that a step further. Mm. <laughs> Not sure what exactly that means, but because um, we're all basically made of the same stuff. And, and he looked into the uh, infinitely small, the infinitely large, and basically turned it on uh, some of the assumptions we had on, on their heads. Well, I think it's more, I, I look at it a little differently in the sense that he put together um, theories that were there, uh, general relativity, quantum mechanics, and um, realized things about black holes that people had not realized before. Um, and even about inflationary cosmology, I think he realized the role of quantum fluctuations um, in creating structure. He realized um, that black holes do decay, that they're not stable, and that introduces really interesting questions that people pursue to today. Um, he did some major work, most of it um, having to do with, with the sh gravity and the shape of the universe. Gravity, the shape of the universe, and working towards that unified theory that brings together uh, quantum physics and the theory of relativity. How close did he bring us along? You know, people always want to frame every person's research in those terms. It's not exactly how I would frame his research. Um, you know, he was working out the consequences of quantum mechanics and relativity in uh, relatively specific settings, such as black holes. Um, but also the universe. Um, of course, everyone would like a theory that g gives the answers to everything. But I wouldn't, I mean, ultimately, you know, he wasn't really doing string theory per se or something where they would state their goal was to do that. Um, he was trying to work out the equations of the universe, the equations of structure in the universe. Trying to? Uh, how much did he succeed in what he set out to do? Well, he never told me what his all his goals were. Um, I think you know there's still questions about informations in black hole in black hole. There's still questions about the wave function of the universe. Um, but the important thing is that he made some really big advances that um, you know moved moved fields forward. Um, I'd say both in terms of cosmology. I think the idea that um, fluctuations, quantum fluctuations that happened at the time of inflation create structure. Um, it wasn't only him, but he, he was really um, pivotal in, in, you know, getting those observations out there, but also, um, you know, black holes decaying, the idea that um, they're not stable objects that live forever, and that quantum mechanics really plays a critical role. Um, those, those were major advances, and um, so those were questions that he set out to answer and did. I mean, there are some questions that we still uh, pu puzzle over today, of course. These are big, difficult questions, but these were major breakthroughs as well. What's it, what was it like sitting down to talk shop with Stephen Hawking? You know, it's funny because, you know, as a physicist, we talk to physicists all the time, but of course, it's a very unique thing to talk to Stephen Hawking. Um, but I have to say, in many ways, I was kind of just fascinated by how he functioned as a human being, you know. Um, you know, how did he put together words? Um, how did people pace their conversations so that they could accommodate what he had to say? Um, you know, I didn't work with him directly. There are probably many people who can speak more to that, um, you know, what it's like to really be doing research. But but the fact is he was following recent developments and he was, um, you know, creating some of the recent developments, which is really amazing. But to sit next to him, you know, I have to say there was like the corny that I was just curious how he made the words, watching how he would focus on particular words or letters. I was very happy to see my name was actually in his vocabulary so that he didn't have to spell it out. Um, so, you know, do, things, you know, just how people would, you know, have their, con he was, it was very nice at, at a table, people would have their conversation. And, um, but when he was ready to say something, everyone would stop and, and listen to him. And, um, you know, sometimes it was a profound, profound insight, sometimes it was a joke. I mean, he was very funny as well. One of the last um, fields that uh, he uh, focused on or spoke out about was artificial intelligence. He expressed worries about uh, where it's all going. What has he contributed to that conversation? Well, I think there's basically a sort of uh, anxiety that's been developed that people, you know, there's a lot of things to worry about. Um, 
in, in the world at this point. That, that might be one of them, but I don't think it's the only one. Um, but I think his, his voice carries a lot of weight, which gives him a little bit of extra responsibility. But, you know, ultimately, a lot of these decisions are political and business decisions. So, you know, he can bring attention to a point, but then it's up to societies to decide what to do with that information. Lisa Randall uh, of uh, Harvard University, the author of Warped Passages. Thank you so much for speaking with us here on France 24. Yeah, I'm sorry it's a sad occasion, but it's very nice to see so many people honoring such a great physicist. Yeah, it's certainly uh, one of our big headlines today. Thanks again for joining us from Princeton. Stay with us. There's more to come here on France 24. We'll have more news plus the day's business.